Fraction and Decimal Conversions Part 2. So in this video we're going to be converting fractions to decimals. And there are two ways to do this. The first way is if your denominator is a factor of 10 or 100. And this only works if that is the case. So what you'll do if that is the case is write an equivalent fraction using a denominator of 10 or 100. The denominator will tell you the place value to use for the decimal. And then the numerator from that equivalent fraction will be the digits used in the decimal. So let me show you what I mean. We are going to convert 3 fifths to a decimal using a denominator of 10 or 100. Now, either one, 10 or 100, would be doable here, but we want to pick the one that's easiest. What makes the least amount of work for us? So I think 10 would probably be easier than finding an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. Now remember, to find an equivalent fraction, we're either going to multiply or divide. Now I can't divide 5 by a number and get 10. I have to multiply 5 by something to get 10. I have to do 5 times 2. So I'm going to do 5 times 2 at the bottom of my fraction, but whatever I do to the denominator has to be done to the numerator as well. So I also have to do 3 times 2. So when I do this, I have 3 times 2, which is 6, over 5 times 2, which is 10, and now I have 6 tenths. But we're not done. We still have to put it in fraction form. So we can refer to our place value chart and we can see, okay, I know this is 6 tenths, how is that written as a decimal? Well, obviously the 6 goes in the tenths place. Where is the tenths place? It's the place right after the decimal. So I'm going to use a 0 in front of the decimal as a placeholder, and then I'm going to put 6 in the tenths place, because 6 over 10 is the same thing as 0 0.6 or 6 tenths. Now this fraction is really interesting because as I look at it, I notice that the numerator is larger than the denominator. This means it's an improper fraction. So I think what I would like to do is go ahead and convert this to a mixed number first. And to do that, we'll simply divide 17 divided by 10. Well, 10 goes into 17 one time and there's a leftover of 7. So the mixed number is 1 and 7 tenths. Well, because there is a 1 and that's a whole number, I can say I already know that the 1 goes before the decimal, so I'm just going to put that in my answer line, right? 1 and 7 tenths. How do I write 7 tenths as a decimal? I don't have to get a new uh, denominator here because the denominator is already 10. That makes it super easy for me. So. Let's just find the tenths place value after the decimal. That happens to be the very first place after the decimal. So all I have to do is write the 7 in the tenths place value. So 17 tenths is the same thing as 1 and 7 tenths. For this next one, 4 and 12 25ths, I'm actually going to have you do this one on your own and we're not going to check it in the video because I think you can do this. Now I am going to give you a hint that 4 in front of the fraction represents a whole number, which means it's going to go in front of the decimal. So you're going to have 4 and something there. Now remember, your steps are here. So you just have to make sure you're writing an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10 or 100. Try to decide which one is going to be easier. Is it going to be easier to divide or multiply 25 to equal 10 or to equal 100? Okay, and then you've got this. So pause the video, convert it to a decimal, and then when you are done, we're going to move on to the next part of the video. Now this is the other way to convert a fraction to a decimal, and this will always work no matter what numbers are in your fraction. So this is my favorite way to work because it always, always, always works out. The first thing you do is divide the numerator by the denominator. The numerator becomes the dividend and the denominator becomes the divisor. We put a decimal to the right of the dividend and a zero after the decimal. 
we bring up the, the decimal into the answer space so the digits stay lined up by place value. So this is when we're dividing, okay? And then we divide as usual as if the decimals are not there. If there are leftovers, we'll add a zero to the end of the dividend to create an extra place value. Then bring this zero down to continue dividing. You can continue adding a zero and bring it down until you have a remainder of zero. And if your decimal is repeating, meaning it continues to have the same remainder over and over and over again, then we simply place a bar over the numbers that are repeating in the decimal for the answer. So let's see what that actually looks like in practice. Let's convert this decimal, or this fraction, to a decimal by dividing. So I have one fourth. Now we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator, so it's one divided by four. Okay, now we're going to put a decimal to the right of the dividend, okay, and a zero after that. And then what we'll do next is we're going to bring the decimal up into the answer space, and then we're going to divide ignoring the decimals. So does four go into one? No, it does not. So does four go into 10? Yes, it does. How many times? It goes in two times. Four times two is eight. And now I have a remainder of two, but I don't want a remainder. That's not good. So I'm going to put another zero here and I'm going to bring it down. So I have to extend that out. All right, so how many times does four go into 20? Oh, it goes in five times. So I'm gonna put a five up here. Four times five is 20. So now I have a remainder of zero, which is exactly what I want. So one fourth is the same thing as 25 hundredths, or 0.25. Like I said, this always works. Let's try it again. So here we have a mixed number. We have two and one eighth. Well, I know that the two is a whole number and that it will go before the decimal, so I can go ahead and put two and the decimal in my answer line. And then I just have to figure out what comes after the decimal, and that's gonna be what we do with the fraction. So we're going to do one divided by eight. Now remember, I'm gonna put a decimal after the dividend and a zero after that. And then I'll bring the decimal up into my answer line and then I'll just divide, ignoring the decimal. Okay, does eight go into one? No, so I'll put a zero there. Does eight go into 10? Yes, it goes in one time. So I have 10 minus eight is two, and again, we've got a leftover, which we do not want, so we're gonna add a zero and bring it down. And so I have eight going into 20. How many times does eight go into 20? It goes in two times. 8 times 2 is 16, so we get a leftover of 4, all right? And again, I don't want a leftover, I don't want remainders, so we're going to have to add another 0 and bring it down, and this becomes a 40. Now, how many times does 8 go into 40? It goes into 40 five times. 8 times 5 is 40, so now we don't have a remainder anymore, which is perfect. We're done dividing. So what comes after the decimal is 0.125, or 125 after the decimal. So I can put that here in my answer blank. So 2 and 1 eighth is the same thing as 2 and 125 thousandths. Now for this final problem, I want you to try it on your own, but we are going to check it. So pause the video, convert this fraction to a decimal using division, and then we will check it afterwards. So the answer to this one looks kind of interesting because there is a bar over my six. That means the six is repeating. When you look at my division here, you'll see a pattern. I'm constantly writing the number six up top and every time there's a leftover of two, so when I bring another zero down, it's three going into 20, which is always 18, right? Six times three is 18. So it's happening over and over and over again, which means it's repeating. And so I would say once you see the same number repeating three times in a row, you can go ahead and stop and say, you know what, this is a repeating decimal, I'm, I'm going to need to put a bar over this. So our answer here is six tenths with a repeating six, okay? 
If you have any questions about that, we'll talk about it in class. Good job.